Hello, my name is Mr Douglas and what we're going to be looking at is a video on the science of learning. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore the neuroscience around learning and some practical strategies that work with that to make us better learners. So I think the first thing we need to do is explore what learning actually is. So learning is the acquisition of knowledge or skills through study, experience or being taught. If we want to make that a little bit simpler to understand though, Learning is effectively creating new memories of new things or making old memories stronger. So what's a memory? So memory is basically the faculty through which our mind stores and remembers information. And all of this happens in the brain. So the brain's a great organ. It controls everything we do. It's made up of billions of nerve cells, which are called neurons. And it's the different patterns of electrical activity across the billions of these neurons that allow us to think. So if we look at a neuron quickly, we can basically see that a neuron will conduct electricity along it from one end to the other. And as we said, it's that pattern of electrical activity that allows us to think. How do we relate thinking to memory? So this is where the gaps between neurons become important. So uh, these gaps, which we can see there between one end of a neuron and the other are known as synapses. And synapses are important because we believe this is where memories are stored at a cellular level. Um, the basic premise is the stronger that synapse, the stronger the memory will be. So let's have a look about how electrical conduction works across synapses. So what we can see is the electrical uh, signal is traveling up one neuron across the synapse and then travels along the other neuron at the other end. And that's the basic process of creating and accessing a memory. Now, if you noticed, the uh, electrical signal took longer to cross the synapse than it did to go along the neurons. And that's because the synapse is relatively weak. The stronger we make that synapse, the quicker the electrical conduction across it um, happens and therefore the stronger the memory is. So if we watch that again, we can see quite clearly at this point that conduction across that synapse is much slower than conduction along a neuron. So how can we make our synapses stronger is what we need to investigate. So the very first and most simple way to make a synapse stronger is to keep repeating the information we want to take in. Every time we add a little bit of information along that neuron to the synapse, the synapse gets stronger. And if we do it again, it gets stronger still. And again, it gets stronger still. So the simplest way to make our synapse stronger is to revisit information. So it's not enough to just learn it once in your lesson and leave it there. If you do that, you'll forget it. The synapse won't get stronger and it'll get weaker over time and you'll forget everything that you've learned. Another way then that we can uh, make synapses stronger is to think about the different ways that we take in information. So sight, hearing, words versus pictures are all processed in different parts of our brains. And that means that that information will come along different neurons to that synapse. So we add more neurons in. And the more neurons that we activate through different mediums of taking in the information, the stronger that synapse will become still. So what we've looked at so far is making the entrance to that synapse stronger. And it's okay to make the entrance stronger. That's going to make the synapse and therefore the memory stronger overall. However, we also need to make the exit to that synapse stronger because if we relate this to a corridor, if you make the entrance to the corridor um, bigger, you can get more people into that corridor at once. However, if you don't make the exit bigger, you're still only going to have the same amount of people leaving the corridor at the end as you would going into it. So you need to make the exit stronger to increase general speeds in the process. So if we want to make our memory stronger, we need to make both the entrance to the synapse and the exit to the synapse stronger. And the only way to make the exit stronger is to be trying to use that information. So actually thinking about it, thinking about answers to questions and constantly repeating answering questions to that, that synapse. So we can see again, as we use our synapse more and more and think about that information, the exit to the synapse gets stronger and stronger still. So what we've looked at now is the basic neuroscience behind memory. We're going to look at some practical strategies to go along with it. So what we're going to uh, explore is, is dual coding, retrieval practice and spaced practice. So we're going to start with dual coding. So dual coding takes advantage of multiple inputs to make the entrance to the synapse stronger. Um, so this is the idea that we might use pictures and words or we might use audio input versus uh, visual input. 
that kind of kind of thing to access more and more neurons and make the entrance stronger. Um, we're going to focus on combining pictures with words for better learning. So how can we do that? So there's a couple of things we can do. First of all, um, if your class material has been mainly word based, go and look for visuals that work with those words and compare them. So if you've been learning about the Colosseum, go look at a few pictures in history with Roman history. Go look at a few pictures of the Colosseums go along with those words if they've been described as big, impressive, architecturally, you know, grey buildings with lots of dusty floor. Go look at a picture that go with that. And vice versa then, if you've been using visuals as your main medium for your lesson, try and explain those visuals in words. Again, we're still taking advantage of those multiple neurons to make the entrance to our synapse stronger. And finally, if you're trying to learn things like lists or maybe a method in science, you can take that, that method, which might be given to you in words, and try and convert that to picture form to go with it. Again, to give you more than one medium to remember that information. So finally, what does dual coding look like then? So you might find that you can create infographics which match pictures and words for a topic. You might just have diagrams. You might make cartoon strips or graphic organizers or timelines. And actually we've included a whole bunch of um, template graphic organizers, cartoon strips and timelines for you to use in your consolidation work at home. So if we move on to retrieval practice then, retrieval practice is important because it's the only way that we can make the exit to the synapse stronger. So this is the idea that we're practicing thinking about and remembering this information. So what does that look like? So step one is you can just put away your class materials and write or draw everything you remember about that particular lesson. And it's really key here that you do this from memory. It's not good enough to read the materials. Again, you need to write down what you remember because reading it is gonna to add to our input. It's not gonna help our exit. So we need to remember what we can here. And once you've done that, you need to go back to your class materials and check for accuracy and write down in a separate section all the points you've missed. Another method of retrieval practice is take as many practice tests and do as many practice questions as possible. You might wonder why your maths teachers set you 30 odd questions for one little bit of work, even though you think you've done it the first time. It's just to make you keep practicing it and therefore make sure that you're likely to remember that method. If you don't have any ready-made tests, make your own and get a friend to make your own and try trading it with them so that you've got more tests to do. And a final method of retrieval practice is make flashcards. So write the question on one side and the answer on the other. And again, it's really important here that you don't just read the question and then turn the flashcard over and read the answer. You need to think about what you remember for that answer before you check it. Because if you don't, you're not practicing getting information out of that synapse. Finally, we're gonna talk about spaced practice. And spaced practice is important because of uh, something called the forgetting curve or the forgetting effect. So if we don't revisit content over time, the synapse will get weaker and weaker um, because we're not practicing using it. However, if we spend enough time learning something over a sustained period, eventually the synapse becomes fixed and therefore won't get any weaker. And that's when we describe something as being in your long term memory. So what can we do with spaced practice? Well, there are two things to think about. First of all, it's important to review information from each lesson or class. However, if you do that straight away, that's not very effective. So always take a break in between doing the lesson and reviewing it. And then there's a side note here, which says, um, it's just pointing out that actually five hours spread over two weeks is much more effective as a learning strategy than trying to do five hours all at once. And that's just because again, it's spacing out the work. But what does that look like? So we can think about here, if we have done a lesson yesterday, let's go back and write down everything we remember about it, then leave it a week and do the same thing, then leave it two weeks, do the same thing, and then leave it a month and do the same thing. And if you leave it a month, you will have made a pretty good effort at storing that piece of information in your long-term memory. And again, we've created a template to help you do this. Uh, so you'll uh, be able to work this with your retrieval practice. It's just a mind dumping template. So it's the idea that you go back and you write down everything you can remember check it against your class notes and then add in any um, 
corrections that you need to, then you go back to it a week afterwards and you do the same thing, then a week after that, so it's two weeks after the original learning, and then finally two weeks after that, so it's a month after the original learning, and you can find that template with all the other resources you've been given. So thank you for watching this video on the neuroscience of learning and how we can relate that to practical strategies. Hopefully you find it helpful, and if you do have any questions about how to better use your consolidation time, then please do get in contact.